Most people know the South Cumberland for its outstanding natural features. The Great Stone Door, the Fiery Gizzard, Foster Falls, the Swanee Natural Bridge, and much, much more. But there's a whole other side to the story of the South Cumberlands, a rich and fascinating history of the interaction of people with the land, an interaction going back thousands of years. The first humans arrived in this region about 10,000 years ago. These hunter-gatherers climbed the plateau in search of wild game. They sought protection in the caves and rock houses, sheltered spots underneath a sandstone overhang, where they camped between hunting forays in search of elk, white-tailed deer, black bear, and other game. By around 5,000 years ago, they had begun farming, making pottery, and establishing a less nomadic, more civilized lifestyle. These woodland Indians settled in the valleys of the plateau, raising corn, beans, and squash. In the early 1700s, the first Europeans arrived in this area. Like their Indian counterparts, they too were hunters who followed game. These so-called long hunters helped open the way to farming and settlement. The Savage family, after which Savage Gulf is named, can trace its presence in the Gulf as far back as 1719, when Robert Savage obtained some 250 acres in the area. Robert's son, Decatur Savage, his wife and children, farmed and lived in the bottom of Savage Gulf for many years. In the 1840s, near Tracy City, a man named Benjamin Wooten discovered coal on his land while trying to remove a groundhog from its hole. The discovery of coal gave rise to the appearance of railroads in this area, built initially to bring the coal to market. After the Civil War ended in 1865, and until the 1920s, coal mining was an even more important part of the economy of this region. At one point, coal mining employed over 700 local people. In the 1930s, during the Great Depression, the people who lived on the plateau were hit hard economically. Recognizing the unique character of the area, some Tracy City businessmen, led by Herman Bagenstoss, got together and bought over 200 acres of land and gave it to the state to use as a camp for the Civilian Conservation Corps, or CCC. The CCC was composed of young men who were earning money to send home to their families. They built roads, strung telephone lines, constructed fire towers, and fought fires. It was also these young men who built much of the famed Fiery Gizzard Trail. The timber industry has been an important part of the South Cumberland economy for many decades. In the deep valleys, well watered by year-round streams, trees can grow to an impressive size. Unfortunately, most of the original old-growth timber has been harvested. What you see today in much of the park, and across the rest of the plateau, is secondary regrowth, dating from the early and mid-1900s. By the mid-20th century, visionary local leaders saw that the land had even greater geological, biological, and recreational significance, and deserved to be preserved. Mining, logging, and making moonshine gave way to more recreational and family-oriented activities like hiking, camping, climbing, and swimming. People began to recognize that the Cumberland Plateau had much more to offer on a recreational and aesthetic level. Music